Is this the best Mark commentary available today? Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Gospel of Mark by William L. Lane in the NICNT commentary series. Is this the best Mark commentary? There are scholars and pastors who would answer that question by saying yes. So why do I have it as ranked number two on my website? I'm going to answer that question in this video, tell you more about this volume, and share with you four different academic reviews. And let me, let me tell you, wait till you hear these reviews. This is one of the most well-reviewed commentaries that I have ever come across. Please subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this, and I would really appreciate it if you click the, the thumbs up button, the like button on my YouTube videos, as that really helps me on YouTube. Thanks for considering that. William Lane published this commentary in 1975, so it is 45 years old. It is 652 pages in length. Uh, if you use this commentary before, let me know down in the comments what you think of it. And if you've used any other NICNT commentaries, let me know uh, what, what you think of them. And if William Lane's volume on Mark is on your radar, I'd be interested to know what people think. William L. Lane passed away in 1999. He taught at Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary, Western Kentucky University, and Seattle Pacific. He is mostly known for this commentary and also his Hebrews commentary, which exists in two volumes in the Word Biblical Commentary series. And this is one of the, the best reviewed commentaries on the book of Hebrews available today. Other than his commentary work, William L. Lane worked on the NASB English translation and also the NIV English translation. He was evangelical, conservative, and Arminian. The NICNT series, if you're not familiar with it, is a mid-level commentary series. It's designed for pastors, but really any students, serious students of the Bible would benefit from using it. It's not technical, so a reader does not need to know Greek. It's also not introductory, so if you're not used to reading biblical studies resources, it might take you a little bit longer to wade through some of the sections, and you might find some topics and some vocabulary that are not familiar with to you that you would need to look up, but I would describe it as mid-level. William Lane was invited to write this volume in 1961. And I think that says something about the vol about William Lane, because the NICNT series, it actually started out reformed. Some, some people don't know that. Um, but the earliest volumes were reformed. And, and now it's just more, I would say, broadly evangelical. The, the New Testament editor these days, Joel Green, is, is Arminian. But I would just call the series broadly evangelical. But at a time when um, the series was had mostly reformed volumes. William Lane, an Arminian, was invited to write a volume, and so um, I think it just says something about about the the respect that people had for Lane's uh, scholarship. Um, a couple, just a couple of positions, so you know where William Lane's coming from on just some questions people have about Mark before they buy a commentary. He holds to Mark in priority, which means that he believes that Mark was the first gospel written, first of the four gospel written, and then Matthew and Luke, the other synoptics, will use Mark as a source. So that comes up quite a bit because Lane does interact with Matthew and Luke as he explains the text, the biblical text of the gospel of Mark. He dates Mark to the mid to late 60s, maybe early 70s. He does not accept the longer ending of Mark. So you might be familiar that um, there is a conversation among scholars and, and pastors um, and any Bible readers that does Mark end with verse chapter 16, verse 8, or chapter 16, verse 20. So one's referred to as the shorter ending, one referred to as the longer ending. Lane holds to the shorter ending. So he gives an argument for that position at the end of the commentary. He does not provide exegesis on the longer ending. So verses 9 through 20. There are some commentators that will say they do, that they do not believe that the longer ending is authentic, but they still provide exegesis on it because there's some readers that are just interested to have that information. William Lane doesn't do that. He gives his argument for the shorter ending and, um, and then does not go beyond that. So why do I have this as number two on my website? 
Um, first of all, use the rankings on my website as just a starting place. They're not intended to be the final word. They're just a word. Uh, but I do try and base them on aggregate academic reviews. That's what I like to use academic reviews, because I personally find those most helpful. And because I realize that most people do not have access to those like I do. So I try and build my rankings based on academic reviews. They're not just my opinion. At the same time, I'm not going to deny there's zero subjectivity because, you know, information reviews still have to be read. That's why I say it's a starting point. It's just a starting point. Um, but, but why? So based on academic reviews, then why, what did I see that caused me to place this at number two and not at number one? Um, it's because modern scholar, modern meaning most recent scholarship of the last 10, 15, 20 years considers this volume somewhat outdated. Now, what does that mean when an academic review calls a commentary outdated? Well, it's a reference to the biblical scholarship. So I said before that this commentary is 45 years old. That means that it does not take into account the last 45 years of biblical scholarship done on the gospel of Mark. So if you might be someone saying, I, I don't care <laughs> about the biblical scholarship part, I just want the explanation of the text. Well, then this could very well be, uh, you know, rank number one on your list. Um, but for scholars, sometimes pastors, but I think more scholars who want the most recent, you know, want to read about the most recent work being done on the gospel of Mark, this one is relatively outdated. But again, if you're just looking for explanation of the text that, and you don't care about um, the scholarship, the explanation of the text isn't outdated. It's the scholarship that outdated. So this still might be uh, number one for you. But anyway, that's why it's number two um, and, and not number one. I'll put a link down below in the description box to uh, the, my best Mark Commentaries page so you can see the rankings. And I'll also put a link to Amazon in the description box down below if you want to um, just get a quick link to Amazon for this volume. All right, four different academic reviews. The first one, so two out of the four reviews are reformed, are Calvinist. They come from Calvinist reviewers, so in other words, not Arminian. They, they don't see eye to eye on those theological topics, but but that's all the more amazing. What they say about the volume is just all the more amazing. Westminster Theological Journal is the first one. The reviewer says that this volume is an enormous advance in evangelical scholarship. An enormous advance in evangelical scholarship. Lane does not fall prey to dehistoricizing of the gospel story. He shows himself a capable and sober, sober apologete for the trustworthiness of the second gospel. And then the reviewer agrees with another academic review that he quotes that referred to this volume as a masterpiece. So that's two reform scholars calling this volume a masterpiece. They say it's, he says it's an enormous advance in evangelical scholarship and he's an, and Lane is a, a sober apology for the trustworthiness of the second gospel. That means he defends the authenticity of the gospel of Mark, not just theologically, but also historically. So amazing review. A uh, second review from Biblioteca Sacra, which is a journal for uh, Dallas Theological Seminary. And this reviewer, I'll note his name because some of you might know him, Harold Honer, um, who wrote a, a well-reviewed Ephesians commentary. He says about Lane's Mark volume that it is a monumental commentary on the gospel of Mark from an evangelical perspective. It is the best English commentary on Mark today and will be a standard for years to come. Just amazing, amazing reviews. Again, the first one called it a masterpiece. The second one said it's a monumental commentary and the best English commentary on Mark. Third, from the Reform Theological Review, no reader can fail to profit from a renewed acquaintance with the mind of Mark and his gospel record with Dr. Lane as his expert mentor. And fourth review from Union Quarterly Review, Union Seminary Quarterly Review. The exegesis of the text is carefully done with traditional conservative interpretations predominating throughout. 
one is also favorably impressed with the reverent, serious tone of Lane's comments that displays his obviously deep Christian faith. Those are some of the best reviews I have ever read for a commentary volume. So I hope they were helpful to you in understanding more about this classic work. Please don't forget to uh, subscribe. Please don't forget to like. Thank you so much for watching this video and for um, uh, just visiting my website and watching my channel. I'm just, I just have such great joy in helping people understand the Bible more. Thank you for watching it.